Okay, I normally um, may require only one of these <laughs> throughout the whole course, calculating a standard deviation uh, from a set of data. It's because students kind of like to have that on their homework. I won't put it on a test, but, uh, but you should take notes because there may be a homework problem where I ask you to, to calculate a standard deviation. Now, if you were in, the, in a different statistics course, like our Math 281, you would be doing this all the time. And you would probably use to learn how to use the statistical function keys on your calculator to do that. So, uh, you know, the, the standard introductory course in statistics is uh, a lot of number crunching. This course, um, I'm really um, de-emphasizing that kind of number crunching. So, but we'll, you may get to do it once. So take notes on this one. All right. Now, um, this other method of calculating standard deviation, I'm going to square all the numbers in these columns. So x squared, 5 squared is 25, there's 49, 25, 36, 9, 16, 25, 81, 36, and 16. And then we add up that column. So I got 10, 19, 25, 40, 52, 53, 58. And carry the 5, 5, 7, 11, 12, 13, 16, 17, 27, 31, 318. And, uh, okay, so I want to uh, double check that real quick. Let me see, this is 50, 99, 180, 180, <laughs> 216, 225, 250, 266. 266, 276, 282, 288, 318. Okay, 318 is, appears to be correct. And that's the sum of the x squareds. Alright, so sigma x squared is 318. Now, what, you know, look what's nice here. I have no decimals. I just, you know, if, if, if your data happens to be whole numbers, then the x squared column is also going to be will also be whole, whole numbers. All right, so um, now the formula using sigma x squared and sigma x goes like this. It's n sigma x squared minus parentheses sigma x quantity squared divided by n times n minus 1. Got that? All right, so n is sample size times the sum of the squares minus the sum of the x's squared all divided by n times n minus 1. Like that. So let's see if we, we get that. I think I was trying to be just a little too clever here. Let me make a little more room. Um, so s squared, plug the numbers in, it's going to be 10 times 318 minus 54 squared divided by 10 times 9 and this is um, 3180 minus what's 54 squared? 22916 I think. I better check. So 2916 54 squared is 2916 2916 divided by 90 and my board's getting a little, little cluttered. S squared would be 3180 minus 2916. I'll just do it. Is 264 divided by 90. And if we take the square root of that, 264 over 90, I believe we get the same. 1.7 divided by 90. Yep, exactly the same, 1.71 something, 1.7, so there we go. And it is the exact, exact same calculation. The, the formula that I had earlier and this one are equivalent. It takes some algebra to go from one to the other, but, but it can be done. All right, so there we have the standard deviation number. All right, now I'm going to um, do some erasing. And, and so I have some room on the board to talk about what the standard deviation number means. 
And that's a, that's a key thing here. So, let me see. Let me erase. I have uh, summarized our summary statistics for this set of data. Sample size, again, is represented by letter N. And for this data, there are 10 pieces of data. N was equal to 10. The mean is called X bar. It's the average. was 5.4. And the standard deviation is S, which is 1.7. Now, after this, I'm going to call this the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. So we, we actually have two other mean. We have another mean and another standard deviation, which I will talk about in a bit. But um, anyway, let's, let's move on from here. Now, um, to explain the, to give you an idea about what the um, standard deviation um, indicates, what it means, I want to tell you about the empirical rule. So the empirical rule says this. It says that about 68% of data lies within um, one standard deviation of the mean. 68% of data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Let me get two more of these up here. Um, about 95% lies, I'm going to kind of shorten my sentence here, but it would be all this, lies within two standard deviations of the mean. And for three standard deviations, about 99.7% lies within three standard deviations of the mean. All right, so I hope you can read my writing here. Um, this, is, this is known as the empirical rule in, in some textbooks, and, and I like to use it to, to illustrate. Now, this is kind of a rough rule of thumb. And, and what they're really referring to is when the data is distributed like this. Now, you may recognize this, this curve. It's called the bell curve. <laughs> the bell curve. And in statistics, we don't normally call it the bell curve. We call it the, the normal distribution. And, and it gets its name because most data is normally distributed like this. Most data, the center of the data is clustered. The numbers around the center are clustered, and they taper off on both ends. For example, the, the height of men. And what's the average height of a man in the United States? I don't know what it is. Let's suppose it's 5 foot 10. And so 5 foot 10 would be here, and people taller over there, people shorter over there. And so as you get up into the uh, you know, 6 foot 6 range, 6 foot 10 range, there are very few people that tall. When you get down to about 5 feet or, or shorter, there are very few people than that short. So um, that's how height is normally distributed. So we call it the normal distribution in statistics. 